So you're thinking about playing as the Dark Urge, but not sure if it's worth it? Don't worry, I got you covered, because in this video, we're going to discuss the pros and cons of choosing the Dark Urge origin story in Baldur's Gate 3. So for starters, what is the Dark Urge? Well, the Cliff Notes version is that this origin story provides a more defined background where your character is plagued with the desire to kill, murder, maim, and overall cause mayhem in the Forgotten Realms. And as the player, you can choose to either give in to these desires or resist them. The Dark Urge opens up a lot of unique dialogue and encounters throughout the course of the game, and later in the story, you will uncover the full lore and background for why your character has these Dark Urges. And this will tie directly into the lore for the original Baldur's Gate games, which I'll discuss later in this video. But before we do that, a message from our sponsor, Ipsos Isei. Have you spent countless hours sifting through loot in Baldur's Gate 3? I know I have. Well, why not take some of that time to earn some IRL loot instead? Ipsos Isei is a survey-based company that can help you turn your opinion into gift card rewards that you can use to shop at your favorite brands. And it's so simple to use. After setting up your account, all you have to do is take part in quick surveys and answer simple questions to start earning rewards. There are so many gift cards to choose from, such as Amazon, PayPal, and my personal favorite, Visa debit cards. I completed some surveys in my spare time and was able to earn enough rewards to pick up some new headphones for video editing without dipping into my own wallet. And you can do the same by signing up for Ipsos I Say for free today. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description to start earning rewards with Ipsos I Say right now. So should you play the Dark Urge on your first playthrough? If you really want to check this out, then I say go for it. I personally think Dark Urge is best for a second playthrough so that you can see how it contrasts with the vanilla story. But if you don't have 100 plus hours to sink into multiple playthroughs and you want to see what the Dark Urge is all about, I don't see any problem with that because most of the dialogue and choices will be the same. You'll just have this added element of wanting to kill everything from time to time that you have to wrestle with. However, there are some drawbacks that are unique to the Dark Urge. For starters, you know this cute tiefling bard character, Alfira? Well, she'll get brutally massacred by the Dark Urge, and this one isn't even a choice. It just happens one night when you rest at your camp. Now, there are workarounds that you can implement to save Alfira from the Dark Urge, such as knocking her out before you rest, or knocking out your main character, etc. If you just Google Save Alfira Dark Urge, you can find some Reddit posts that go into detail on how to pull this off. Now, it's worth pointing out that Alfira isn't a major character in the story or anything. She's just a side NPC that you can talk to at a few points in the game. But she's a likable character, so you might not want to get her killed. So this is definitely one of the bigger drawbacks to the Dark Urge. It can also potentially interfere with romance as you'll be forced into a scenario where your urge drives you to kill your lover. This can be bypassed with dice rolls, but that is something else to be aware of. I personally didn't run across this because my Dark Urge character consistently angered all my companions, so I never got close enough to pursue the full romance with any of them. Dark Urge can also pose some problems for role-playing. If you want to create a custom background for your character, step into their shoes, and decide how they act in the world, then the Dark Urge can get in the way of this kind of immersion. Your backstory is much more defined, and while your character doesn't initially remember what happened to them in the past, you'll eventually learn much more about that. This is where I'm going to get into spoiler territory and talk more about the lore. So if you want to avoid spoilers, then now might be a good time to bookmark this video for later. So back on the subject of role-playing, let's say you want to build a paladin character and role-play as a warrior honor-bound to serve justice and protect people. Well, if you're playing as the Dark Urge, that's not really the background of your character. Before the start of the main story, you were actively involved in a plot to enslave the people of Faerun and carry out the work of Baal. But a treacherous move from Orin displaced you from the inner circle of Kethric Thorm and Gortash. She basically stabbed you in the head and gave you brain damage, which is why you have such a hard time recovering your memories. This defined background will conflict with some of the goals of a custom character. This won't affect the gameplay, mind you, but it may affect immersion and role-playing, which is worth keeping in mind. 
So let's tie this back to Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, because the Dark Urge has a very similar background to the protagonist of the original games. You are a spawn of Baal, the Lord of Murder, an evil god who spread his seed amongst the mortal races of Faerun as a sort of backup plan to resurrect himself should he ever get killed. The children of Baal are known as Baal Spawn, and they live with the urge to murder and inflict harm on others. The protagonist of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 was a Baal Spawn, and the Dark Urge is a Baal Spawn as well. And much like the end of Baldur's Gate 2 and its expansion, your character is faced with a major choice. Do you give in to the murderous urges or forsake your legacy to do Baal's bidding? Giving in to the urge grants certain gameplay benefits, most notably the Slayer form, which allows the player to shapeshift into a monstrous demon with sharp claws. This is a throwback to the original games as you could take on the Slayer form in Baldur's Gate 2. It also creates some very interesting dialogue with Kethric Thorm, Gortash, Orin, and Saravok. Much like the vanilla version of the game, Gortash will propose an alliance with your character. But if you're the Dark Urge, he reveals that you were actually originally part of their plot before Orin betrayed you. Then she didn't lie. The past is lost to you. Let me clear up some mysteries then. We share so much history. You and I initiated this plot. We discussed in depth the failures of our predecessors and how to avoid them. We understood that if we were to unite, no one could stand in the way of the Dead Three. So, unite we did. First we obtained the crown, then we enslaved the brain. From there, it was but a small step to the most successful religious hoax ever perpetrated. In Baal's name, you set your bloody daggers to cause panic in the streets, killing in the Absolute's name. You would have carried out that part of the plan had Orin not ruined your hard work. It was all going so well until you vanished. Orin informed us that henceforth she would speak for the Temple of Baal and act on their behalf. But she... she made a mess of things. Unlike you, she cannot control herself. But the most interesting encounters of all are the conversations with Orin and Saravok, considering, like you, they are both Baal spawn and servants to the Lord of Murder. You were once Baal's favorite. You worshipped him the way he would wish. Your bloodlust innate. Your thirst for butchery unslakeable. But you were foolish enough to think yourself untouchable. You didn't see Orin rising through the ranks. You were blinded by her artistry, her devotion. You believed she worshipped you as much as all the others. Your fall was as spectacular as your birth. The purest ball spawn there ever was. Ruined by his own hubris. But now you have returned. Tell me, are you here to have your vengeance on my granddaughter? Gortash betrays us, Bloodkin. He sets a leash to our slaughter. He uses us to drive the herd towards his tin men's oppression. You must kill the tyrant, smear him across his rock-rotten halls, and pluck the netherstone from his carcass. Then we jewel a sweet slaughter kin. The winner claims the stones, Baal's true chosen. The loser rots on his altar. Playing as the Dark Urge will even change the nature of the Orin boss fight in Act 3. Rather than fighting her entire retinue of soldiers, if you're the Dark Urge, you'll actually fight Orin 1v1 in a battle to decide who deserves Ball's favor once and for all. In the aftermath, you'll have to decide whether to ally yourself with Ball once more or reject your birthright. I was happy to see this tie in to the original Baldur's Gate games. One of my original concerns about Larian creating BG3 was that it wouldn't honor the lore and legacy of the OG Bioware games. But I'm happy to report that Larian has done a fantastic job with the lore and storytelling in this game. So have you started your journey as the Dark Urge yet? If so, what were some of your favorite moments from your playthrough? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more BG3 and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.